Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, who live your shells, death, slayers, passes, vassals, minions. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And today I want to talk about Fukushima. And uh, as always, uh, I only do these uh, videos on Fukushima occasionally, but it is one of the most important stories of our time and certainly affects every single uh, person and uh, creature on this planet. A tragedy of epic proportions, and uh, we're still seeing. Uh, more and more horror stories unfold. And uh, so my hat tip to the likes of uh, Ms. Milky the Clown and Missing Sky for doing uh, diligence in covering this Fukushima story on a daily basis, month after month, uh, year after year, week after week, day after day. And uh, this needs to be done because uh, a couple things that mark uh, the story of Fukushima is one is the, the, tr the uh, uh, nature of of the destruction and uh, the massive amount of uh, damage done continues to be revealed uh, year after year, month after month, week after week, but also the uh, epic uh, amount of uh, cover-up and lies that have been uh, perpetrated by uh, the Japanese government, the American government, uh, TEPCO, uh, all these years. And so uh, occasionally I have to do a video just because uh, more and more uh, spectacular damage is revealed and more and more lies are revealed and uh, this is uh, a case of that yet again. So uh, first of all as I uh, uh, kind of pick up where I left off in my previous video about Fukushima Horror Show, Global Horror Show 2014 and a lot of the same um, factors are in play here. We have a, a massive uh, disease and maladies of wildlife all up and down the West Coast, including uh, mutations, and uh, we have uh, a drop in the number of seabirds. I live here in uh, Seattle, Washington. I can attest to the fact that uh, it's an amazing uh, drop in the population of seabirds in the area. I've lived here for many, many years, and, and I can attest to the fact that it's uh, notable to see how much seabirds have disappeared. Uh, caribou mortality rates are high. We have radioactive tuna. Uh, dissolving starfish, sea lions, and salmon depletion in stocks. I'll attach a, a video from uh, uh, Vancouver, Canada, north of here, uh, where a local has done a survey to find that, uh, as far as he can tell, uh, there's a lot of uh, dead dead zones in the ocean, and certainly off the coast of uh, Canada. So we're seeing uh, these effects of uh, Fukushima all over the globe, and uh, although the uh, experts in the media seem to contest uh, whether these effects are from Fukushima. Uh, for the most part, all over the globe, these anomalies are happening, and people are making these connections, and it seems uh, 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 almost uh, not debatable that there is some kind of connection. Particularly as we, as, as I go through all the uh, new stories that have come out about Fukushima, we're finding more and more scientists saying that the, the impacts uh, should be uh, obvious all over the globe because uh, the amount of radiation released is significantly higher than previously uh, admitted to and the damage far more severe. So the fact that there's going to be a connection between all these global uh, anomalies and wildlife death, um, this connection to Fukushima will be more and more clear. Then we have a, a debris uh, coming in uh, off the, from uh, uh, tsunami debris from Japan, as well as irradiated the tsunami debris off the coast of California now, a thousand miles off the coast, apparently seven tons of it, 80 foot long, and a human being could actually walk on it. And there's a 400 percent spike in the radiation level of this debris field. And then we have debris waist high in areas of Canada. So this is uh, starting to wash ashore, and uh, we're going to find out more about levels of radiation. Of course, one of the uh, ironic things here in the west coast of the U.S. is initially they were testing fish and the uh, beaches here for radiation because people were so concerned. But once public outcry died, uh, they quit uh, even checking the radiation levels because uh, there's no longer any reason to, I suppose. So, uh, so let's get to some of the uh, uh, gruesome details of some of these new reports. Well, we have 200 trillion. Becquerels in fuel rod materials found near Tokyo, 170 kilometers away from the source of Fukushima. 
And then this is uranium in glassy little spheres. And, and then there's structural material from the nuclear reac reactors also present. And uh, some of this material is, uh, uh, is also running off into the ocean. But that's a, a staggering admission to find out that stuff from the nuclear reactors, the very cores, fuel rods, this material was blown uh, over 170 kilometers away and close to uh, Tokyo in these, uh, these really uh, bizarre uh, little glass, uranium glassy spheres. And uh, so, and, and, and this also uh, brings the radiation uh, uh, 200 trillion becquerels in fuel rod materials close to Tokyo. And we, ha we have a do uh, Japanese doctors who are saying that Tokyo should no longer be inhabited. So there are some uh, experts who uh, see a, a huge amount of radiation uh, in there and that the entire population of Japan that, in that area uh, could be affected. And, and as I brought up in the previous videos, um, we're already seeing the results in local populations around Fukushima and the, uh, the numbers are starting to go through the ceiling for thyroid cancer and other radiation associated diseases. And, uh, and like I say, now we find out that there's the fuel rod materials um, not only got spread all over the, the region, but they're also running off into the ocean along with all the other irradiated water being dumped into the ocean, 400 tons a day now. And um, nuclear fuel and, and core material is completely exposed and has sunk into the cement holding tank below. And, uh, this is something that they've talked about all along, is the, the complete meltdown of these nuclear cores and the fuel rods, and that uh, removal of them is going to be uh, nearly impossible. Uh, that they, they, they don't even know how far down they've melted. They know that they're at least triple the previous known depth. So uh, these cores continue uh, to uh, penetrate down further and uh, once again it will be uh, radiating the water which will run off into the ocean and this is pure uh, um, unfiltered radiated water. And then we have trenches that are filled with thousands of tons of plutonium contaminated liquid that are now also leaking into the ocean with no solution at hand. So um, just like we have these tanks of, uh, uh, of water that's being uh, supposedly filtered and a lot of that has to be dumped because they're running out of space. We also have these trenches um, full of uh, tons, thousands of tons of uh, plutonium contaminated water and uh, that's going off in the ocean. So we have the groundwater, we have the water cooling uh, the reactors, um, we have all these different sources of irradiated water uh, going into the ocean every day, so no wonder we're having uh, dead zones in the Pacific Ocean. And then it turns out that uh, a new report says that 278 trillion becquerels of plutonium were released, 200 times the amount reported by TEPCO previously, and that's a huge amount, even the, the amount they underreported, but now it's uh, 200 times that. A staggering amount of plutonium. So once again, the levels of radiation and the, the, the array of types of radiation that are being released from Fukushima uh, continue to rise this many years later. It's not going down. We're, we're getting the admission of not only staggering amounts being released uh, every day now, but the fact that uh, uh, staggering amounts have been being released for years now, and they're only finally admitting to it. So, you know, just like so many other things that have to do with government cover-ups and corporate cover-ups, uh, how, how are the citizenry supposed to know what to think or how to act and what kind of measures are being taken to, to, to address these, uh, these massive uh, tragedies? Uh, if we can't count on the right numbers and the, and the, and the truth, uh, how can and anyone be uh, able to take the right steps and uh, make these uh, companies uh, cult, uh, um, responsible for these uh, events. So then we have uh, water underneath the reactors will just be dumped into the ocean. So now we find out that the water underneath the reactors is going to be dumped straight into the ocean. And it's getting to the point now where I can't even keep track of all the different sources of water um, that, are, uh, that were full of radiation that are being dumped in the Pacific Ocean. So it's not even worth having a discussion whether there's some connection between Fukushima and, uh, and all these strange events we have coming uh, coming up in the Pacific Ocean. Um, 
And then we have surges in released radiation that have been going on for years, a new report. And that ties in with what, what I've been talking about in this whole video as well, with these massive amounts of radiation being released. And they're finally admitting to it. And now uh, yet another report comes out says these surges in re released radiation. Um, and that's how we reach these 200, 300, 400 trillion becquerel levels of release. So we have uh, this, once again, this massive horror show unfolding in Fukushima. And the more and more truth that gets released, uh, the more and more horrible it becomes. And at, at some point, there has to be a tipping point where the results are so catastrophic, uh, they're going to have to admit to to what the source is. In the meantime, we find uh, Japanese media and Western media burying the story, um, this cover-up going on, obscuring uh, the facts even when they do manage to come out. And uh, unfortunately, uh, much more horror show to come. And uh, I'm sure I'll be doing a Fukushima 2015 horror show video, undoubtedly, if I'm still here. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.